So about six months ago, we durability tested the OnePlus 10 Pro, and it did not go over too well. Today we find out if the design on this new OnePlus 10T has been structurally improved. Although similar, there are quite a few physical differences on this new device. Which does give me hope that it won't end up in the same shape as the last one. Fingers crossed. Let's get started. Taking a close look at both phones, we can see where the physical design has been modified. While they both still have a large square camera array in the top left corner, the LED flash location is different, along with a few of the cameras. OnePlus has also ditched the Hasselblad branding this time around. I guess their relationship just became too much of a hassle. But We are also missing the mute switch, so instead of looking uniquely OnePlus, it's just looking like one more rectangular slab of glass. There are also no antenna lines with this new phone. I'm not sure exactly how they accomplished that one. The biggest difference though is probably how much material is running up the side of the phone right below the camera lens. If we look at where the 10 Pro snapped earlier this year through that thin side rail, it looks like the new 10T has quite a bit more material to work with under that lens. The design has more meat and has changed quite a bit, hopefully enough to make a difference. There are a few more subtle variations, of course, and we can cover those as we move through the durability test. We'll just run through the whole thing, because if we deviate too far from the norm, we might wake up people who fall asleep listening to my videos, and we gotta stay consistent. Lullabies with Jerry coming soon, though. Just kidding. I mean, unless. And we still get scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. The front camera has been downgraded slightly from a 32 megapixel down to a 16. It is still a hole punch under the glass, right below that super thin earpiece slit. If we make our way around to the sides of the phone, we find that the whole thing is actually made of plastic. And now the invisible antenna lines make a lot more sense. I thought this phone was made of metal ever since I pulled it out of the box. Up top, we got quite a bit more plastic as well, and plastic running down the left side. The volume rocker is made from metal. The bottom has more plastic, along with the plastic SIM card tray, and no expandable memory. It does have a red rubber ring, though. The US version of this phone only comes with a rating of IP54, meaning, like the nothing phone, splashes are probably fine, but submersion would be unhealthy. The back panel of the OnePlus 10T is etched and feels so smooth it's almost oily. Hard to explain. It is made from glass though, and the Moonstone Black is acting like sandpaper to my razor blade. The cameras are different as well this time around. We have a 50 megapixel camera up top, then the circular LED flash, thumbs up if you remember his resilience from the last video, and an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera right below those, and of course we lost the telephoto and it got replaced by a 2 megapixel macro camera. Could have just left that circle empty in my opinion. I don't often take pictures of small things. Now the OnePlus 10T is about 650 bucks right now, which is quite a bit cheaper than the $800 10 Pro, and with that lower price point naturally we get a few downgrades. Another one of those slight downgrades is now the screen, instead of being 1440p, drops down to 1080p, but we still keep the 120Hz and the 1 billion colors, so not too shabby. Plus it lasts for about 20 seconds under the heat from my lighter before going white, which means it's AMOLED, and then does not totally recover. I am skipping the fingerprint readers because we already know my fingerprints are broken. Which brings us to the bin test. OnePlus has done a redesign and had time to fix any structural issues, but they've also changed up the entire base material, shifting from aluminum to plastic. And at first, it looks like all those changes might have paid off. No structural damage or cracked glass. So far, it's lasted longer than the 10 Pro, at least until we flip it over. Same spot, right at the camera lens, which is rather unfortunate. I was rooting for this one, and we might as well keep going. Once again, the 10T fractures along the same line as the 10 Pro, right along the top of the battery. 
Notice though the screen pulling its own weight with an almost 90 degree bend and still in one piece. Wait, I guess going a full 90 is a bad idea. Or maybe the screen is actually still fine and it's just the battery ribbons that have come disconnected. Speaking of which, while the price of the 10T is lower and some things have been downgraded, that's not the case with the internal battery. It is slightly smaller at 48,000 milliamp hours, but at 125 watts, it can charge twice as fast as the 10 Pro, which is a huge improvement. It's even rated for 800 to 1600 charge cycles before hitting 80% capacity. That's like draining your phone every day for four years and still having 80% of your original battery left. The battery science is getting super good. So to answer the question in the title, did OnePlus fix their latest phone? The answer is yes, they did change up things structurally, but not quite enough to matter. A case is probably still a good idea. Remember, my reviews very specifically only cover structural integrity and durability. There are many more aspects to consider when picking a new phone. And just because the device snaps in half during my extreme durability tests does not make it a bad phone. Tacos fall apart and they aren't bad. And OnePlus can always improve next time around. And I'll be here when they do. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.